صلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله. We discussed about عذر بجاهل about the excuse of the ignorance with regards to uh, the issue of takfir or declaring someone to be a non-Muslim or someone becoming a disbeliever in Allah Azza wa Jal due to an action uh, or statement uh, of, of disbelief. And due to some mistakes that needed clarification, I felt the need to uh, very quickly and briefly discuss quickly the issue of takfir and then explain the two evidences that those ulama use or some of the evidences but just two that we're going to deal with uh, that the ulama that some of the ulama or many of the ulama in fact uh, say that uh, make the excuse of ignorance or say that it is a legitimate uh, situation uh, for those who have fallen to an issue of disbelief that it requires establishing the evidences to the individual who fell into that error. So this relates to the issue of takfir and it's very important for us to have just a, a, a general understanding of this so that way we're not quick to pronounce issues of takfir and quick to blindly follow uh, opinions and so forth but that we have some idea that this is a very intricate mas'ala, it's an, uh, a very de delicate issue in which uh, it's easy to fall into error, that these are issues of Iman and they are intricate and detailed issues of Iman that we should not really uh, involve ourselves with unless we have been grounded in our studies and with the ulama and the reason I am uh, even engaging in this issue because I did spend some time uh, studying this issue along with the issue of takfir as this was related to my master's thesis and even with that uh, it is uh, easy or to make a, a slip of the tongue or to make a mistake or to have some mistake in understanding a particular issue because these issues are so daqiq these issues are so uh, precise and intricate. So very quickly, the issue of takfir, uh, as we mentioned prior to this, that takfir is of two types. This is one of the categorizations uh, of takfir that the ulama mentioned. Takfir uh, mutlaq wa takfir al-mu'ayyan. Takfir mutlaq means the general takfir, meaning if someone, and it's a wasf or a description of uh, an, an, an issue uh, or a, a statement or a uh, action or a belief that takes one out of the fold of Islam. That's what takfir mutlaq is, the general takfir. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, in his, his book says, Inna ladina kafiru min ahl al wal mushrikeen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here says, Verily those who disbelieve from the people of the book, min ahl al kitab wal mushrikeen. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the general takfir, meaning anyone who fits that description from the people of the book, and we're not talking about those who came before the advent of Islam, before the, uh, before the Prophet sallallahu but we're talking about those, and, and which includes some of them as well, those who left the message, the message of the messengers, alayhim after salatu wa salam. However, we know that after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, came to mankind with the message of Islam that it was a requirement for uh, all people, the people of the book included, to believe in the messengership of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his message which was the Quran and the Sunnah of, his, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So with that being case, those people, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, in, in his book in the Quran made the general takfir, meaning anyone who fits that description uh, in general uh, is disbelieved. Okay? Takfir al ma'ayyan, the specific takfir, comes to when you apply that ruling 
to a specific individual. For example, if you say whoever men men yesidu li ghayri la fu kafir. Okay? Whoever uh, makes sujood to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has disbelief. That's takfir mutlaq. That's the general takfir. That's a general principle there. That means whoever does this has disbelief. But before you try to apply that to an individual, this is why it's so, so important, why it requires ilm, wafiq, and this is for, reserved for the ulama making these kind of, uh, these applications of these very intricate uh, principles. Uh, when it comes to applying that to a specific individual, that's called takfir al-ma'ayyin, meaning that you, uh, the now, it's the, uh, applying of the conditions of takfir to a specific individual, okay? And we'll just be as simple, keep it as simplistic as possible. Uh, and some of those, or the conditions, the shurut, shurut takfir. Shurut takfir meaning the conditions or the prerequisites for making takfir al-ma'ayyin, for applying that to a specific individual. So for example, if someone were in an Islamic country, for example, here in Saudi Arabia, and they accuse someone of takfir, and they brought them before an Islamic judge, okay? This would not be just something you can just play with and anyone can make this hukum. So they take this to the court, for example. This is an example. And they then, uh, the, the judge would be the one to make this uh, ad, adjudica adjudication, to apply this principle of takfir. He would look at these specific uh, conditions. And the first condition being, meaning, the first condition would be that the person is mature and that they are sane when they did this action or statement of disbelief. So, for example, as the Prophet ﷺ said, uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, the pin is lifted on three. And one of them he mentioned, a sagir had to yablav. Uh, is the 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 little the the child until he reaches maturity? Okay, when naim when naim had to yufik, and the one who's sleeping until he gains his uh, until he wakes up. Okay, and then also the one who uh, was um, who lost their mental capacity until they gain their mental capacity. So then, therefore. What would prohibit making takfir on an individual is that, of course, if it was a small child and they said an action, they said something, uh, a statement of disbelief, okay? So you would not make takfir of them. Why? Because they didn't meet that criterion, one of those criterion, which is being mature, okay? Or, for example, the one who is mentally in incapacitated, perhaps even out of drunkenness, you know, because they're not in their normal state. They're not in a normal state of where they can discern between truth and falsehood. So in that situation, you would, they would not be, uh, they would not, the judge would not make takfir of them or the scholar or whoever would not make takfir of them. Why? Because they're akal, they don't have, they don't meet that condition of takfir, which is that they are either, that they're sane and that they are mature. Okay, that's the first condition. The second condition of takfir al ma'ayin. This is for the specific takfir before you apply it to a specific individual. Is that an yasdara al fa'l ala wajh al qast wal ikhtiyar. This is very important. And that it is that the person intended to do that act, uh, that act of disbelief, meaning that they were not forced. So, for example, the individual who is uh, uh, who's forced to do an action. Someone puts a gun to their head saying, hey, I'm going to kill you if you do not utter, uh, you say that Jesus is the son of God, for example, or some other uh, statement of disbelief in shirk. Okay? Or they say, hey, I want you to renounce Islam. And they put a gun to your head and they're going to kill you. Now, you can either not renounce Islam, and then maybe they kill you, and the chances are that they're going to kill you if this is really a, a serious threat that you believe that they're going to overwhelmingly kill you, or you could actually stay, uh, 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 say, hey, I'm not Muslim anymore, or whatever the case may be, in order to save your life, but in your heart, 
is Iman, meaning in your heart you really believe in Islam. But in order to save your life, this, this is meaning you were forced. So, the second condition is that the person has a choice and they say this uh, without being forced and knowingly. Okay, that they are aware of what they're saying and they have intention behind it. They intend to disbelieve, to disbelieve. And the third condition for tikfir, uh, before making tikfir on a specific individual, is iqamat uh, al is that the uh, evidence is presented to that individual. And then the scholars differ whether it, uh, the issue of whether they understand the issue or whether they, they, they understand the evidence or not. So this is a whole nother mess, and that shows you the intricacy of a lot of these detailed matters in creed and why we leave that to the ulama. But just to give us a, a general picture of this issue. So the third condition, as I mentioned, is iqamatul hajjah, meaning that, that the person must be away, made aware. So for example, someone who's new to Islam, and that's going to the hadith we're about to, to talk about, that we talked about, but I had to edit because there was a mistake that I made. And so now we're going to uh, correct that and give us the, the correct understanding uh, from the some of the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah. So, uh, for example, someone who's new to Islam and they say, hey, alcohol is, is lawful. Uh, then, of course, you wouldn't make takfir of them because they are new to Islam. They don't even know. So they don't they, they they may not even know and have an idea about this. So then what you establish the hujja, you show them the evidences are, are what you know and say, hey, that the, the scholars are unanimous, they're in agreement that alcohol is prohibited in Islam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibits it in the Quran, and the Prophet also prohibited it. So then you establish the proof upon them. So you don't uh, say, hey, you made a stahlal, you said that this is lawful and this is unlawful. No, because this person is new to Islam. So part of that condition before making takfir is that you produce the evidence for them. So that way they now, they know. And then they can say, okay, oh, now I know the truth and I don't believe that any longer because now you've established that this is not from Islam. So now let's move to the hadith uh, that we we uh, talked about before, but now we need to get into it uh, a little bit more in depth. And this is the hadith of Abi Waqid al-Laythi radiallahu ta'ala And this is one of the strongest uh, evidences for those who say that the, someone who does the uh, major shirk, that they... Uh, perhaps may have the excuse of ignorance, that this can be a legitimate uh, excuse for someone who is who has committed the major shirk. This is one of the evidences that those group of scholars use, is the hadith of Abi Waqif al-Laythi. So let's listen to this hadith. An Abi Waqif al-Laythi radiallahu ta'ala'anhu قال أنهم خرجوا عن مكة ما رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم so Abi Waqif al-Layti, he said that, uh, that they had left from Mecca to Hunayn, to the battle of Hunayn. قال, وَكَانَ لِلْكُفْرِ صَدْرَةٌ يَعْكِفُونَ عِنْدَ وقال, وَكَانَ لِلْكُفَارِ صَدْرَةٌ يعكفون عندها ويعلقون بها أسلهتهم يقال لها ذات الأنوات قال فمررنا بسدرة خضرة عظيمة قال فكنا يا رسول الله اجعل لنا ذات الأنوات فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قلتم والذي نفسي بيدي كما قال قوم موسى اجعل لنا إله كما لهم آلهة قال إنكم قوم تجهلون أنها لسنن لترقبن سنن من كان قبلكم سنة سنة So this is another uh, narration of the hadith of Abi Waqid al but the meaning is the same. 
And in this hadith, uh, this is the hadith of Avatil and Wat. And uh, so the uh, so uh, the hadith of Abi Waqith al Laythi, who said, Radiallahu ta'ala an, he said, We departed with the Prophet وسلم, to Hunayn, and we had recently left Kufr. So he stated in the hadith that they had recently left uh, Kufr, meaning they, they were new Muslims. Literally within perhaps a month's time, they were brand new Muslims. Okay? Uh, the Mushrikeen used to have a tree which they used to devote themselves to and hang their weapons upon. They used to call it Vatil and Wat. We passed by a tree and said, O Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, appoint for us a Vatil and Wat. Like they have that to learn what. So make for us that to learn what. Like they have that to learn what. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. By the one in whose hand my soul is in. These are the ways, the like of what you have said is like what Bani Israel said to Musa. Make for us a God as they have gods. He said, verily you are ignorant people. And that's in Surah Al-A'raf, uh, verse uh, 138. So in this hadith, which is in a tirmidhi this is a hadith of that and what uh, Imam Fozan mentions about this. He said uh, that the Prophet وسلم, was astonished upon this request of the Sahaba. And that's why he said, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Uh, and the Prophet وسلم, said, these are the ways that the people uh, followed Meaning before you, those aladina kana min kablukum, leturkubun nasunin min kana kablukum, that you will follow the ways of those who came before you, uh, and you have said the like of what Bani Israel said to Musa, uh, and then Sheikh Salim bin Fazani said, when Musa alayhi salatu salam crossed the sea with Bani Israel and Allah drowned their enemies while they were looking, they passed by some mushrikeen who had occupied themselves with their idols. So they said to Musa alayhi salatu salam, make for us a god as they have gods. He said, verily you are an ignorant people. This is what Musa alayhi salatu salam said then in the Quran. Musa rejected their saying and said, verily these people will be destroyed for that which they used to engage in. Meaning the evil and falsehood. So all that they are doing is in vain. And this is in Surah Al-A'raf. Because, why? It is shirk. So Musa alayhi salatu says, Should I seek for you a God other than Allah, while he is giving you superiority over the alameen? Uh, so Musa rejected their saying, like our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam rejected the saying of his sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum. But neither of the people of Musa alayhi salatu salam, nor the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam committed shirk. Because when Bani Israel made this statement, they did not associate partners with the law because they did not act upon it. Similarly, although the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in, asked for, for shirk. The Sahaba asked for shirk. Dhatul nunwat, because they asked for dhatul nunwat. They said, ijal lana dhatul nunwat, kamalhum dhatul nunwat. Make for us dhatul nunwat like they have dhatul nunwat. Okay, like they have this tree to seek blessings from. Uh, Allah saved them. They stepped back after they had been forbidden. So they made this statement out of ignorance and not intentionally. And when they were informed that it is shirk, they ceased and did not continue. If they had continued, they would have committed shirk with Allah. So that's very important. And that's the shahid. That's the point I wanted to mention. And that's the point that the scholars who believe, the scholars who hold this view, that uh, their, uh, the excuse of ignorance or other bijahil, even in issues of shirk, this can, this can be the case depending on the, uh, the knowledge of the, the people who are falling into shirk and, and so on and so forth, that this is their evidence to show that this is the case because the Sahaba, Sahaba radiallahu out of ignorance, not intentionally, they asked about this. Why? Because they were new to Islam. Kunna hudatha bil Islam. We were new to Islam. So this shows us here that this, uh, that 
the excuse of ignorance. And one of the benefits that Imam Fozan mentions about this, he said uh, this shows us the danger of being ignorant about Tawheed. Because a person who does not know Tawheed, it is very possible that they will fall into shirk, of course. So that's why it's very important for the Muslims to know and understand their creed. Know and understanding uh, creed. And uh, those that is one of the main uh, uh, the shahid of this hadith. Also, Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, mentioned about this hadith that uh, he says, لكن من الناس من يكون جاهلا ببعد هذه الأحكام جاهلا يعذر به. So Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah said in regards to this, he said that there are some people that they are ignorant with some of the rulings uh, and that this, this, um, that they are excused by this ignorance that they possess. He said, فَلَا يَحْكُمْ بِكُفْرَ أَحَدْ حَتَّى تَكُمْ عَلَيَّ الْحُجَّةِ مِنْ جِهَةَ بَلَاغَ الرِّسَالَةِ كَمَا قَالَ تَعَالَى لَإِلَّا يَكُونَ لِلنَّاسِ عَلَى اللَّهِ حُجَّةِ بَعْدَ الرُّسُلِ وَلِهَذَا لَوْ أَسْلَمَ الرَّجَلُ وَلَمْ يَعْلَمْ أَنَّ الصَّلَاةِ وَاجِبَ عَلَيْهِ أو لَمْ يَعْلَمْ أَنَّ الْخَمْرَ حَرَامٌ لَمْ يَكْفِرْ بِأَدْمَ الْإِتْقَادِ إِجَابَ هَذَا وَتَحْرِيمَ هَذَا بَلْ وَلَمْ يَعْقِبْ حَتَّى تَبْلَغَ تَبْلَغَهُ الْحَجَّةَ النَّبُوَّةَ So Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah رحمه الله تعالى he said that sometimes people uh, that they will have the excuse of ignorance and he said, so then in this situation, then uh, the judgment uh, of disbelief is not applied to anyone until after they, uh, the, the evidence has been uh, provided to them. And, and that is from the evidence from the Risala, meaning from the message of Islam, from the Quran. And he says, and this... Uh, is taken from the Quran in the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and so that the people uh, would would have no excuse before Allah until after a message was sent a messenger was sent so that this is the establishment of the proof and then Shaykh al-Islam said and he said so in the light of this in light of this if a per for example if a man became a Muslim, Aslam al-Rajal, he became a Muslim. But he did not know that prayer is an obligation upon him. Or he did not know that alcohol was forbidden. Then he does not disbelieve. Even if uh, he believed that that was permissible, that, that, that prayer, that he didn't have to pray, or that he uh, didn't, that he uh, believed that alcohol was permissible for him. He doesn't become a disbeliever. Why? Because he's new to Islam. He, Sheikh Islam said, uh, be, so he doesn't disbelieve due to this, due to his not knowing that this is prohibited or that, this, uh, that the prayer is an obligation upon him. He says, rather, he is not pu even punished for this until the evidence is the, the evidence, the prophetic evidence is provided to him, meaning uh, that the proof must be established, uh, the, the evidence must be presented to him uh, in order that, to know that he understands now that this is prohibited or, such and su or, or the prayer is an obligation. The other evidence that uh, those scholars use who say, who believe in the uh, excuse of ignorance as an excuse uh, even if someone falls into major shirk is the hadith of Mu'adh as we mentioned prior to this Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala that when he came from Sham uh, that he had found in Sham you know meaning uh, Philistine, Syria, Jordan, this region that he found that the people used to make sujood to their uh, to their leaders and to their uh, righteous people, 
So he figured that, you know, the pro this is befitting, of course, for the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi if they can do this for their people, then of course, for, uh, you know, this is befitting to the pro to do this to before the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi So when he came from Sham and he saw the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he made sujood to him. The Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم, uh, فَلَا تَفْعَلُوا فَإِنِّي لَوْ كُنْتَ آمَرٍ أَحَدٍ أَنْ يَسْرِ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ لِأَمَرْتُ الْمَرْأَ لِأَمَرْتُ الْمَرْأَ أَنْ تَسْرَ لِزَوْجِهَا So the Prophet وسلم, do not said, do not do this. He said that if I had ordered anyone to make sujood, you know, to make prostration to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then I would have commanded the woman to do that to her husband, showing the, the great status of the husband. Uh, and so from this, Imam Shokani, uh, what, what the, uh, the scholars mention, uh, some of the scholars mention in regards to this, that this issue uh, the, of making sujood to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is muhtamal meaning that it is an issue which uh, can be an ambiguous issue. And what I mean by that, meaning that it could be, it, could, it has more than, a, you know, it has different implications, meaning it could be that the person is making sujood because out of worship, or they could be making sujood uh, just out of, uh, you know, exalting someone that, you know, for example, like we see uh, in many Asian countries, in Japan especially, specifically Japan and some others, that they bow out of respect in their culture. This is what they, uh, is a part of their, their culture and their tradition. So Imam Shokani mentions about this. He said, uh, so Imam Shokani Ta'ala mentioned about this hadith in, 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 in general that he said that it's it's essential that we specify with regards to uh, why someone made sujood to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said because if the person is making sujood or prostration, qasidin, meaning with the intention for a rububiyya, you know, to, to exalt someone in lordship, uh, in their sujood, in their prostration, then this is uh, shirk. This is shirk with, uh, you know, this is shirk with Allah Azza wa Jal, meaning they're associated partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that they are, you know, they're making shirk. And then he said, but if they did not intend rububiyya, lordship, you know, that this was an act of worship, but instead, they did this out of, you know, as we mentioned, the uh, Japanese do this out of respect or ta'zim to show that the person has great status. Uh, like he said that many of the people did to kings, to foreign kings, uh, and that they would, you know, go to the earth or maybe kiss the earth out of uh, gratitude or, or whatever, you know, to exalt this ruler. He said, then that, is, that does not contain any disbelief in it. So the point being uh, to illustrate that some of the scholars use that as evidence to show that there's an excuse for ignorance. And some they explain, as Imam Shokani mentioned, that, uh, that it depends upon the qas, that it depends upon the intention of that action. And that goes back to the hadith of Abi Waqat the Laythi, that those Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala majma'een, they were new to Islam. They had the excuse of ignorance. And they did not intend disbelief. They intended to actually, uh, because they didn't know that they thought that this was a way to receive blessings. Now we know that this would be an act, a, a statement of disbelief, but it is not considered that they fell into disbelief because they did not have the qasd. They did not have the intention. 
So I hope that that is clear, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our gift and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct from the lies of Allah, anything I said that was incorrect from myself, the Shaitan, was on the law of Salaman and Muhammad.